You're watching Destiny Church. Live your call, fulfill your destiny. Amen. Once again, welcome po to Destiny Church. Now, first of all, I would like to uh, acknowledge if there, if this is your first time joining us, and I, I just like to welcome you personally. Can can you raise your hand if uh, this is your first time? Welcome. Meron pa ba iba? Welcome po. Anyone else joining us for the very first time? Praise God. Now, maybe some of you are watching us online, and it is your first time to join us here at Destiny. No? And uh, uh, so, pakilala lang po ako ng konti for those of you that are joining us right now for the very first time. My name is Pastor Carlo Panlilio, and I'm the senior pastor of Destiny Church. No, Me and my wife, Shaleen, we have been pastoring Destiny for the last 25 years. And uh, praise God, it has been an amazing 25-year journey. Now, maybe some of you are asking, no, uh, bakit po yun ang pangalan ng church? Why do we call ourselves Destiny? The reason we call ourselves destiny is because we believe that God is a God of destiny. In other words, He is not a God of accidents. No, He is not a God of mistakes. Hindi pagkakamali o aksidente ang buhay mo. You are here for a reason in this world. You are here for a purpose. In Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. Medyo nalito ako. Akala ko nandito, nandito na pala. Ayan. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Sabi po dyan, napakagandang verse. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. So this is God telling you, telling me, that He has a plan for us. Sabi, I know. I have a plan for you. Plans to what? To prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. In other words, no, yun nga, ang, ang, ang Panginoong Diyos po, hindi po siya nagkakamali. Meron po siyang plano para sa buhay mo. Hindi pagkakamali na ikaw ay isinilang o ipinanganak sa mundong ito. No? And, and to make things better, sabi niya, my plans for you are never to hurt you, to harm you, but to actually prosper you. God wants the best for us in terms of how we live our lives here in this world. No? Sabi niya, plans to prosper us, not to harm us, plans to give us hope. I love that word, hope. No, pag-asa. Maraming tao ngayon nawawala ng pag-asa. But the truth is, God wants us to live our lives despite the problems, despite the difficulties. No, God wants us to live our lives with hope, with expectation, with excitement. Plans to give you hope and a future. No, God has a future for you. God has a destiny for you. And that's why no, we call ourselves destiny. Amen? Anyway, this afternoon, no, I'm going to continue our series that we have been doing for the last two months. No, We have been, uh, oh, actually, two, two and a half months already. No, Since the start of the year, we have been uh, talking about this thing called prayer. And as we do, as we begin our word again, can you just please pray with me? Pray tayo. Lord, once again, we commit this time to you and we ask, Lord God, that you will just speak to your people, speak to every one of us with your word. I pray, Lord God, that all the more we will understand the value of, of praying, of the importance of why we need to come to you and ask and petition. And Lord, that we would realize, Lord God, that you are a God who answers prayers. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's give a clap to the Lord. Today's message I have entitled Prayer and Petitioning. No, what does it mean to pray and to petition? Okay. First of all, uh, I'd like to ask this question. No? Ever, ever, have you ever wondered how powerful prayer really is? I mean, makapangyarihan nga ba talaga? Is there really any sense no, to us actually praying? Okay? If, if, we, if we do believe that prayer is powerful, then why is it that so many few people no, bring themselves to prayer? Okay? No, ha, ha, no, is prayer really powerful? I, I remember, no, as a young believer, I heard this statement no, that Prayer no, moves the hand that moves the world. No, that is how powerful prayer is. If you think about it, no, no, 
prayer, yung pananalangin natin is actually, sabi dito, no, it moves the hand, that moves the world. Sino ba, ano ba yung kamay na tinutukoy dito? No? Whose hand are we talking about? No? It's the hand of God who, who, no, who basically moves history and, and destinies of people and destinies of nations. No? Basically, God is the one. He is sovereign. And yet, what, what is amazing is that no, in as much as God, no, God's hand is the hand that moves the world, moves the affairs of men, moves the affairs of our lives and history. Okay? Interestingly, it is prayer that moves the hand that moves the world. And that is how powerful prayer is. In fact, I, I believe that this, this statement has become very, very, uh, uh, what's this? Uh, very, very common that one, one guy by the name of John A. Wallace, he, he was not, uh, he was not uh, the original person who made this statement. No? But then he came, he came up with a, with a poem, sa Tula, that he entitled, Prayer Moves the Hand That Moves the World. And I would like to, I would like to read it no, with you as we, we open up this, uh, this message. No? Sabi ni John A. Wallace in his poem, Prayer Moves the Hand That Moves the World. There is an eye that never sleeps. Beneath the wing of the night, there is an ear that never shuts when we sink the beams of light. No? There is an arm that never, try, that never tires when human strength gives way. There is a love that never failed, fails when earthly love decays. And of course, who, who is he describing? He's talking about God. No, that there is a... There, there is an eye that never sleeps, ni daw natutulog, no, always awake, always sees you. No, that there's a no, there's an ear that never shop, shuts. No, in other words, God's ear is always killing us. No, you will be, you know, you, 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 you can be confident, you can trust in that idea that God actually hears you whatever time of day, whatever circumstance you are in. Okay? Then he goes on to say. That eye is fixed on seraph throng. Seraph is an angel, no? The arms uphold the sky. That ears is filled with angel songs. That love is thrown on high. But there's a power which man can wield when mortal aid is vain. That eye, that arm, that love to reach, that listening ear to gain. That power is prayer which soars on high through Jesus to the throne. And moves the hand which moves the world to bring salvation down. Amen? What a beautiful poem. And then, yeah, it talks about how powerful prayer is. No? Charles Spurgeon, one of the most uh, well-known preachers during the 19th century, said the following. No? Sabi niya, prayer bends the omnipotence of heaven to your desire. And he continues, prayer moves the hand that moves the world. Okay? Ganun po kapangyarihan ng panalangin. I want us to read right now this verse in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Okay? Paul writes to the believers, no? to the followers of Christ in, in Philippi, and this is what Paul wrote. Sabi niya, Do not be anxious for anything, but in every situation, no? by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Now, okay, I, wa I, want, us to, I want us to go through these this words, no, uh, one at a time. First of all, Paul is saying, huwag ka daw maging balis, ha? Huwag ka daw masyadong mag-alala. No, kasi ang tendency natin, pag may mga kinakaharap tayo, may mga pagsubok tayo sa buhay, no, pag may mga uh, challenges, no, the, our tendency is to get anxious, to get worried over stuff, Right? Like if there's a deadline, there's an exam, there are bills to pay, may mga babayaran, may mga kailangan gawin sa trabaho, the tendency is yun na ma-anxious ka. Okay? And, and, and God knows that we have that tendency. And so God is telling us, no, 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 don't be anxious about anything. No? But here's what you need to know. About, no, don't be anxious about anything in every situation. Sa lahat daw ng panahon, what do you do? By prayer. Say it with me. By prayer and petition so your petition so interesting you no know, that that this this words right here actually are basically synonymous with each other when you when one prays he basically you no know, makes a petition but not only that sabi dito 
by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request. Another, another verb, another you know, word that basically describes the same thing. To pray is to petition. To petition is to request. No? At ito daw yung dapat natin gawin. No? To pray, to petition. And here's what's going to happen. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So in James chapter 4, verse 2 to 3, sabi dito, you do not have because you do not ask. Okay? Uh, let's start with you know, uh, the, the first statement of the verse. Sabi dito, you desire but do not have, so you kill. Okay? Meron mga bagay na, what, what, what is James saying here? You know? In other words, there are things that people want, that people desire, to the point that, you no. Know, Ipag, no, yun nga eh, pagpapatayan nila, makukuha lang nila. Tama ba? May mga bagay na ganun eh. No, you desire something to the point of even no, killing someone. No, people, people who, desire, no, who desire for power. Okay? Why is there sometimes, no, uh, bakit may mga, may mga pinapatay? Apparently because no, they, they, they want something and to the point of killing someone over it. You covet, but you cannot get what you want. So what do you, what do you end up doing? Sabi dito, you quarrel and fight. But the problem is, sabi dito, you do, not, uh, you do not have because you do not ask God. In other words, what, what, uh, what James was saying is, okay, some people would even you know, kill, you know, you know, makikipagpatayan pa sila over something. When in fact, the problem, the problem or the reason why they don't even have what they want is first of all because they never asked in the first place. No? Na yung kasagutan pala dun sa kailangan mo ay kailangan mo lang humingi. No? To petition is yun yan. No? Pa- paghingi, to make a request. No? I was looking at uh, the dictionary and uh, uh, I checked out the word petition. No? Kasi yung topic nga, prayer and petition. No? What does petition mean? Okay. Petition, no, according to the dictionary, it is a formal written request made to an authority on our organized body. So, to petition means to what? To make a formal request. No? Just like what, what Paul was saying, no? No, we, are, no, we are actually praying and we are petitioning because we want to make a request. Before God. Another definition is a written request or call for change signed by many people. No? And, and na, sino na dito nag-sign ng petition pagkatapos in guys, uy, pero maka naman dito para mas marami tayo. Para mas malakas yung boses natin. Has that happened to you? Have you or, or maybe you, have, you, you, maybe you are at the receiving end of that and you signed and no, together petitioned or lobbied for something. You know, you're making this request. No, may, da, dati pala, palagi ako nakakatanggap ng parang change.org. No, may mga petitions doon, di ba? Okay. But, but what is interesting here is the idea that to petition is, no, to petition is to make a request by many. Say the word with me, many. No, and apparently, okay, the word of God tells us that real, there is really power in coming together corporately and asking God together. We talked about that last week, di ba? No, that's why it's one thing to pray individually in, in your homes, in your, in your rooms. No, and that is powerful. No, you're, you, you have a prayer life. But, no, you know, that's why the, but the Bible also tells us the value, the importance of what? Coming together. No? In other words, yun nga, mas malakas yung, apparently God honors that. Okay? Sabi ni Jesus, di ba, whenever two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in their midst. And whatever you agree on earth as touching on anything, you know, the power of agreement. No, when you pray together and agree and join our faiths together, apparently that is petition. No? And the more, no, the more prayers are together, apparently, the more powerful they are. And I believe, no, uh, the more God honors and answers those kinds of prayer. Okay, so sabi dito, a written request or call for change signed by many people in support of a shared, shared cause you know, or concern. Okay, you have a concern. Talaga, pag-pray natin yan. Let's pray together. Let's unite our hearts and believe in faith. Let's agree you know, for that cause or that concern. Okay. Pangatlo, 
The word, the word petition means an earnest request. Now, it's not only a request. Apparently, yung word na petition, marang mas malalim siya eh. There's that idea of earnestness. Sabi nyo nga, earnestness. In other words, you're, you're passionate. You're, 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 but it's not only just a simple request. Oh, uy, by the way, baka naman, ano, pwede naman. No, no, no. You're, you're, you're earnest. You're, you're persistent. No, in other words, Bro, sige na, gawin mo na to. Kailangan ko talaga to. Eh, parang may ganon. No? Pag humingi ka, talaga yung tipong humingi ka na hindi ka matanggihan. Ginawa mo na ba yun at any time in your life? Have you ever asked someone for a favor, but not just a favor, but you're really like, sige, na, sige naman na, oh yeah, ate, please. No, gutom na ako. Hindi <laughs> mo ganon, di ba? Okay? No. And then finally, sabi dito, something asked or requested. Oh. So apparently, these things are basically synonymous. What Paul was saying is, okay, it's basically saying the same thing, but yun nga, apparently, to bring emphasis to the idea of prayer. No? Sabi niya, do not be anxious for anything, but in everything, no, but in everything, pray, no, petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. No? And the most simple definition of petition is this. Something that is asked. Okay. In other words, ang prayer pala is as simple as asking God. No. R. A. Tory, one uh, uh, a pastor and a man of God, no, in the late 19th century, he wrote some extensive books on prayer, and he said the following. Sabi niya. We can go on through the whole catalog of spiritual blessings and we will find that every spiritual blessing is received by asking for it in prayer. Indeed, our Lord Jesus himself said in Matthew 7 verse 11, If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give you good things, you know, give, give good things to them that ask him? Okay? And what, what, what is Tori, R.A. Tori saying, sabi niya, lahat ng bagay, all spiritual blessings is actually in answer and is received no, by prayer. And, and, and as I look, and as I reflect, for example, in the Bible, mapapansin niyo na lahat ng miracles that God, that Jesus performed, was always in response to people asking. Hey, check it out. No, all the stories, almost every one of them, Okay? whereby Jesus performed a miracle was a result of somebody plainly asking, Bartimaeus, the blind man, and we're going to be talking about him much more later, no? but, but no? Just, just to point out that reality. No, kung kilala niyo yung story ni Bartimaeus, he was a blind man, and he was sitting, and one day Jesus passed by, and he started to cry out. Bulag nga siya, sabi niya, no? na, na, nalaman niya that apparently there's this man, Jesus, who was passing by, and probably he has been hearing reports that this Jesus was healing people, and so he cried out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me! Okay? And Jesus called him, Ask Bartimaeus, I mean, what do you want? Say, so, Lord, I want to see. He simply asked, Lord, I want to see. Guess what? He saw. Hey? Okay. No, there's another one. No, yung, yung, yung person that was paralyzed, no, and his, bro, his friends brought him no, to, no, to where Jesus was. And, and you know, why did, why did the friends bring this paralyzed man, to ask Jesus to heal. And Jesus said, eh, rise up and walk. <laughs> All the miracles. Now, have you ever asked yourself, is it possible that the reason you can't see any miracle in your life is because, first of all, you never really asked. <laughs> it's not that God does not want to answer. It's not God that does not want to bestow His blessings upon you. It's simply because in the first place, you have not come to that point of asking. Eh? Tama ba? God is telling us, ask. No? Have you been asking? Have you really been praying? And asking and petitioning God. Making requests for your life, for your needs. No? Eh, apparently, I guess a lot of people no, don't really pray. No? 
And I would like to establish this. Why ask? Okay, bakit nga ba tayo kailangan humingi, humiling? Okay, why, why even ask at all? Three things, no? As to establish why, no? Why should we ask? Number one, we need, sabi nyo, need. We need to ask. We need to ask, no? John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist Church, no? He even started uh, basically the, the Methodist revival that swept through England and North America, Okay, that, that changed the course of history in Europe, no? And this is what he said, sabi niya, God will do nothing but in answer to prayer. <laughs> God doesn't do anything or nothing but in answer to prayer. And, and that's what basically what I was talking about. All the things that Jesus did predominantly was a response to people praying and asking Him. I remember the centurion, no, coming to Jesus and asking that his servant be healed. Okay? And Jesus was willing and he was about to come. And this, the centurion, sabi no centurion, Lord, you don't even have to go to my house. Just say the word. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. And Jesus said, he's healed. And he goes back home and finds his servant well. And sabi niya, what time did he got healed? Nung sinabi sa kanya ng mga kasama ko ano oras na, na heal, gumaling yung sakit ng servant niya, he realized it was the exact same time that Jesus told him, go home, he's healed. Amazing! Okay? God will not do nothing but in answer to prayer. Whether we think of or speak to God, whether we act or suffer for Him, all is prayer when we have no other object than His love and the desire of pleasing Him. Sabi niya, proceed with much prayer and you will be made plain. And your way will be made plain. In other words, when you pray, no, not, o- not only does God answer you, He shows you the way. He shows you the way. No, things become clear for you. We need to ask. Why do we need to ask? James chapter 4, verse 2 to 3. Ito yung binabasa natin kanina. You do not have because you do not ask God. Wow! The reason that you don't have, the reason that you lack, may, may kakulangan, may mga pagkukulang ka sa buhay mo, no? at the root of it all is first of all because you never, you didn't ask. No? You do not have because you do not ask. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on, uh, on other pleasures. No? Eh? It is, in other words, pag sinabi kong ganun, you need to ask, we need to ask. Okay, sabihin mo, I need to ask. It is a need. Ano ibig sabihin ng need? And, no, to say that something is a need, it is, another word for it is, it is necessary. It is essential. Okay? What are the things that are essential to you? Check this out. It is essential for you to breathe in oxygen. Otherwise, you're gonna die. Tama ba? Pag hindi ka huminga ng oxygen, you're gonna die. You need, no, you need oxygen. You need to breathe. That is an essential. Okay? Guess what? How many of you want food? You want food? <laughs> but here's the reality. You don't only just want, marami sa atin, we like food. We want food. We crave for food. We desire food. But at the bottom of it all, not, no, it's not only that we want food. The truth of the matter is, you need food. <laughs> you need it. Okay? Kaya nga sa mga oras na, for example, may sakit ka, wala kang gana, no? what, do you, what do our moms or our dads or the doctors tell you, kailangan mo pa rin kumain? Because you need it. Otherwise, if you, don't, if you don't eat food, you're gonna die, you're gonna grow weak. You need it. It is necessary. It is essential. Tama ba? You need water. Okay? Kailangan mo yun. Kaya kailangan uminom. In other words, what happens to you? No? Madi-dehydrate ka. Kaya nga minsan kahit na parang, parang no, sino dito pag nag lbm ka, kahit di ka naman nauhaw, inom ka pa rin ng tubig, inom ka pa rin. Bakit? Kasi you need that. Well, apparently, you need to ask. Are you there? I hope you realize that prayer is an essential. It's not an addition to your life. It's not just, well, if you have time, kung pwede, kung kaya mo, no, 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 no. It is an essential. You need to pray. I need to pray. Okay? I wrote some th- things here. No? So the first step, so okay, apparently the first step to receiving 
is asking. Iba kaya sabi dito, the reason you don't receive is because you never asked. If you want to receive, you have to ask. <laughs> How many of you know that that is just, that is just plain true? Kung gusto mong tumanggap, kailangan humingi ka, kaya ka pala walang natatanggap. Kasi in the first place, hindi ka nahingi. Sometimes kasi we assume, di, alam naman na ni Lord yun. Yeah, true. <laughs> it's not about God not knowing what you need. It's about you asking for what you need. Amen? Okay. No? You can't receive anything if you don't ask. No, that's not profound. That's not difficult to understand. But to, pe- okay. put, to put it plainly, ganito yun. If you don't pray, you can receive. No, and I would like to borrow this, this line. Sabi dito, an unoffered prayer is an, un, is an unanswered prayer. <laughs> an unoffered prayer. In other words, if you don't even pray at all, yes, it's true. God knows already what you need. Okay? But, but okay, if you don't offer that prayer, it becomes an answered, an un, unanswered prayer. Again, let me refer to what, what R.A. Torrey said on his book. No, I, I think uh, his book is entitled uh, Power in Prayer or something. No, this is what he said. Sabi niya, sign natin. Many Christians ask, marami daw mananang palataya nagtatanong, why do I make such poor progress in my Christian life? Ever feel that? Parang, parang usad bagong ka in terms of your growth in, in your Christian life. Why do I grow so slowly into the likeness of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Why do I have so little victory over sin? Palagi kang bumabagsak, palagi kang nagfo-fall sa kasalanan. No, is it because no, God does not strengthen you, God God does not enable you or you're just playing weak? No, why do I have so little victory over sin? Why do I win so few souls to Christ? Okay, in other words, you know, are we even winning people at all? Are we even trying to? Sometimes, we, yes, we go to church, we do all those stuff, but then again, parang, parang hindi naman ako nag-grow, hindi nga ako nag-win, I'm not even burdened, no? Ang sabi dito ni, ano, ni Tori, God's answer is in the words of our text, neglect of prayer. Okay? And w- what is that text, neglect of prayer? James, no, what we are saying, what we have been reading in James, you have not, because you ask not. When was the last time I really asked God, Lord, give me strength. I want to overcome this temptation. Lord, give me strength. Okay? Lord, I want to win people. Give me the courage. Give me the heart. The, give me the compassion to invite friends and family and even strangers. <laughs> Are you there? No? He, he goes on to say, Sabi, you know, with regards to the church, ministers, no, pastors and churches are asking, why is it that the church of Jesus Christ is making such slow progress in the world today? Why is the church so ineffective against sin, unbelief, and error in all its forms? Why does the church have so little victory over the world, the flesh, and the devil? No? Why is the average church member not living their Christianity in the abundance of God's promises? Why does the Lord Jesus Christ receive so little honor from the state of the church today? God again replies, neglect of prayer. You have not because you ask. In other words, let's ask for all you know. Okay? The key to receiving God's promises in your life, the key to fulfilling God's purposes for your life, the key to living in abundance and experiencing no victory is what? It's as simple as praying and asking. Pero kadalasan yun nga, no? isinasantabi natin yung pananalangin. We don't really give it much attention. No? we don't pray. And if ever we do, we seldom pray. No? But we need to pray. Sabi mo nga, I need to pray. I need to pray. I need to ask. Okay? Pangalawa, not only do we need to ask, apparently we are commanded to ask. <laughs> God commands us. God tells us. No? 
<laughs> na realize ko, Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 to 12, this is an imperative. No, this is actually a command. This is not just some request that God is telling us, by the way, just in case, no, you have time, you know what, you can ask. No! I, I, I can almost hear God, I could almost hear Jesus telling us, telling His disciples, ask. I'm commanding you, ask. Ask! Ask and it will be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. And the one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks. You know, these are all pictures of, ano nga, you know, okay? God is telling us, no, is commanding us. Okay? What does He tell us? Ask. Humiling ka daw. Humiling ka na humiling. No? Maghanap ka na maghanap. Seek. At matatagpuan mo din. Okay? Knock. And keep on knocking. No, I, I, the picture that I have in mind is, sino dito naka, no, have you ever received orders from Shopee or Lazada? Talaga naman yung mga, <laughs> like, come on, di ba? Like that, they'll not stop. They'll keep on knocking. If you're asleep, they're gonna, they're gonna make sure that they wake you up if you're there. They, they make sure that you know, I'm here, I'm not gonna stop until you answer. Lalo na pag COD, di ba? <laughs> Kasi kailangan nila, Kailangan nila yung bayad mo. Talaga namang kakatok at kakatok yan. No? no? Pag hindi ka sumagot, talagang tatawagan ka pa. Okay? And, and I'm thinking, do, do we actually pray like that? Do we knock before heaven's doors and heaven's gates? Do we ask? No? In such a way. And why? Why do we have? Why do? Why ask? Because we are being commanded to ask. No? Jesus makes it clear that God is ready to answer our prayer. Sabi niya, Ask and you shall receive. Okay? Check this out. He didn't say, Ask and you might receive. Did you see that? Hindi sinabi ng Lord, Alam mo, pag humingi ka, baka sakali naman, baka mapagbigyan ka din. No, no, no. Sabi ni Lord, Ask, you will get it. The thing is, do you actually even believe that? That if you ask, the Lord's gonna answer you. Seek and you shall find. Hindi sinabi ng Lord, seek and, well, baka naman, baka naman makita mo rin, matagpuan mo rin. No? Knock and baka sakaling pagbuksan ka. No. Sabi dito, knock and it shall be open to you. Okay? Jesus said that those things will be done. No? It is certain. May certainty. May kasiguraduhan. Tama ba? Okay? Not only do we need to ask, we are commanded. So in other words, if you don't ask, you are actually rebelling against God. <laughs> you are sinning because you're, no, the Lord is, you know, the Lord is telling you something. It's like, okay, what is a command? Do not steal. If you steal, guess what? That is a sin. The Lord tells you, ask. So if you don't ask, you're sinning. God wants us to ask. God commands us to ask. But more importantly, I love this. Why, why should I even ask at all? Why should you even ask at all? We ask because of who God is. Because of His character. If you know God, no, what, what do I mean because of the character of God? In James chapter 1, verse 5 to 8. Let's, let's read this together. Ang ganda po ng verse na to. Okay, are you ready to read? No? Okay. Read it together. Read this verse together with me. James chapter 1, verse 5 to 8. 1, 2, 3, go. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God. He who gives generously to all without finding fault. <laughs> Sabi dito, okay, if any one of you lacks wisdom, and this is amazing, okay, because wisdom are one of those things that you can actually ask God for. Hey, I want to tell you this. When I was a young, you know, when I was a young pastor and I was just starting the church, how I wish I could tell you that I already had a lot of, you know, uh, that I was already full of insight back then. I know what to do. I'm so full of wisdom. The truth is, I, I didn't know much. In fact, you no, know, I, I realized, no, I was not insightful. I was not full of wisdom. And I remember literally praying to God, Lord, can me insight in life. I want, I want, I want to have wisdom. Ano yung wisdom? No? Hindi actually ito kat, kat, katalinuhan eh. It's not being, it's not about being intelligent. 
Okay? Kaya nga, there are a lot of intelligent people out there. Apparently, they're not wise. Wisdom and intelligence are two different things. Both are good. No, one, <laughs> praise God for intelligent people. But there sometimes you can be intelligent and being foolish. And you know what? All, you know what, what Solomon did? You know, he basically asked God, Lord, I need wisdom. I need wisdom to govern your people. You know, he was appointed to be the king of Israel. He was young. He understood that he was inexperienced and he was afraid that he might lead the nation in a wrong way. And so he asked, God, give me wisdom. You know, I realized, you know, sometimes we just need to be honest. Okay? No? Solomon didn't want to be a fool. Tagalogin natin ng konti. Ayaw niya maging tanga. Honest siya. Lord, tanga ako. Kailangan ko na wisdom. Kailangan mo lang naman maging honest. <laughs> Hello? Tama ba? Na-realize ko ang sagot sa katangahan? Prayer. No, no, no. no. Did, I, did you not realize that? that was what James and God was saying in this verse? If you lack wisdom, no, you realize, no? Okay? The reason people remain stupid and, no, yun nga, forgive me for the word, tanga. No, yung katangahan, hindi naman, hindi naman yung mura. But sometimes, yun nga, you're, you're a fool. No, you make a fool out of yourselves. You make wrong decisions. Walang common sense. And the reason that people don't have sense, the reason people remain as fools is because they don't even, first of all, I think, they are too prideful, in, they are too prideful to admit that they don't know that they no, that they're stupid, that they're foolish. And that, that prevents them from realizing their stupidity. No. But you know what? If you're just humble, Lord, you know, maalam. I'm not really good. I don't know. And and, 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 and okay? you know, when, when I was when I was studying here is God, I don't know much. I mean, how do you run a church? I'm young. I I was just fresh from the university. I was fresh in, you know. You know, we were a young couple initially, no, not that time. We didn't know about love and relationship. And so I, God, Lord, I need you, God. I need wisdom. Amen? Simply lang, tagalogin natin ng konti para mas practical. Lord, ayoko maging tanga. Bigyan mo ko ng wisdom. Tama ba? Ang sagot sa katangahan, prayer. Sabi mo sa katangahan mo, pray ka lang, kapatid. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Tama ba? Eh, because, and bakit? Okay, in other words, ba't ka na nanatiling tanga? Kasi in the first place, sabi, you receive because you didn't ask. Now, sabi dito, and, and the reason we can ask God, because of his character, sabi, who gives generously without finding fault. That is the heart of God. No? In, in Ma- Matthew chapter 7, look at this. This, this becomes no, okay, amazing. Sabi dito, Ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks the door will be opened. Now look at verse 9. Jesus says, which of you, if your son asks for a bread, you give him a stone? I mean, meron pa ganong klaseng tatay? Kita niya yung anak niya, humingi ng tinapay, binigyan niya ng bato. <laughs> no. No dad, no? Okay? No da- dad does that. And so, sabi dito ni, ni, ni Jesus, no, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven? Our God is good. Our God is loving. Our God is generous. He wants to give. He's not, he's not selfish. He's not trying to keep things from you. No, no, no. God, for all you know, wants to bless you. And sabi niya ngayon, sino sa inyo dito? No. Okay? Yung anak humingi sa inyo, kayong, kayong mga tatay humingi, humingi ng tinapay, binigyan nyo ng bato. Hindi. And then sabi ni Jesus, kung kayo ng mga tatay dito sa lupa makasalanan, pero ganun kabait sa inyong mga anak, how much more 
God, your heavenly Father is. Are you there? Okay. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, sabi dito, now to him who is able, immeasurably more, no? more, you know, able to do immeasurably more than we ever ask or think or imagine. That's, no, why can we ask God? Because we have a God who is able to do, no, more immeasurably, immeasurably no, hindi mo daw ma, ma-measure, no, yung, uh, yung nais gawin ng Diyos, nais ibigay ng Diyos sa'yo. Far more that you can ever imagine. Far more that you can ever ask. In other words, you ask God for something, guess what? He gives you more. He gives you more. That's God. He doesn't just give you what you ask. Again, going back to the story of Solomon, sabi niya, God, no, Solomon realized he was young, he was inexperienced, and so God told him, what do you want? No, and, the, and Solomon said, Lord, give me wisdom. And you know what the Lord did? Because you asked for wisdom, I'm going to give you wealth, I'm going to give you power, and I'm going to give you wisdom. <laughs> Tama ba? Right? No, God is like that. No? Okay. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep His promise. What's the character of God? God is faithful. You can trust Him. No, that He is going to keep what He promised. What does He promise? He promised that if you ask, you will receive. That if you make a petition, God's going to answer you. No? And I'd like to close with the following. No? So, establish it. Why do we need, why, why ask? We need it. We need it. We have to, yes, we need to ask. Number two, we are commanded to ask. Okay? God tells us, ask, go ask. Number three, no, because, because of God's character, that's why we have confidence to ask. We can ask because of who God is. Now, the question is, how do we ask? Because apparently there are, no, I, I, I'm sure that a lot of you here, you've realized that there were things that you asked, pero bakit parang hindi sinagot ng Dios? Apparently there are conditions. There are things that we need to know in terms of how to ask or the manner of asking number one. We need to ask according to His will. <laughs> we need to ask according to His will. Becky Van Valkenburg, tindi nung pangalan niya, no? sabi ni Becky Van Valkenburg, in, a, in his book, God's Word, Your Voice, he said this, sabi niya, I have found that perhaps the most powerful way to pray is to pray God's Word. God has promised us that His Word will not return void. It is powerful and right. Sabi niya, the most powerful prayer is to pray God's word, is to pray what God has already promised, is to pray according to God's will. Look at 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. No? This is the confidence that we have no? in approaching God, that if we ask anything, wait, 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 not just anything, merong ano doon, merong... Uh, uh, what's this qualifier? According to His will. Mm. No? According to His will, He hears us. No? Ano ba yung will ng Lord? Some people are confused as asking God, what do you want? What is your will for my life? Now, you need to understand, God's will is not mysterious. It is not something unknowable. Na Lord, ang hirap na, malaman ang kalooban mo. Okay? No? We can know God's will. Kaya natin malaman ng kalooban ng Diyos, no? First of all, because of what He already stated in the Bible. No, the Word, no, God's Word is His will. And there are many times that if you look at God's Word, you will realize this is what God wants you to do. No, the Bible reveals God's words which explains how He wants us to live. It is God's will for us to understand the truths no, of the purpose of our life and what He is doing when He gives us access to that knowledge. It is God's will for us to claim the promises He has given us in His Word. Okay? In, in John chapter 15, verse 7, sabi dito, But if you remain in me, and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want, and it will be granted. Oh, okay. Parang, okay, Lord, ask whatever I want. Is this even true, Lord? 
I can really ask whatever I want, and it's going to be done. Yes, 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 yes. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you. Now, what happens when you remain in God and His words remain in your heart? No, There's another verse I forgot to mention here. No, a very, very, uh, uh, very popular verse in the Bible, especially among singles. Okay? Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. So, ganit means and ganito natin ina-approach yung verse na yun. Delight yourself, Lord. He will give you the desires. Lord, desire ko siya. Sige, sige, dahil desire ko siya, alam ko nang gagawin ko, may promise eh. I'm gonna delight in the Lord. So, kunyari, no, so, okay, desire ko siya. Okay? And we think that, no, this is now a way to get whatever we want. Now, I'm gonna delight in God. Lord, I am worshiping you. I'm coming to the prayer meeting. I'm coming to the service. I'm praying. I'm delighting in your word. I'm delighting in your word. Now, rather than you twisting the hand of God to give you what you want, what you don't realize is some, okay, ito yun, no? Gusto, kunyari, no? Gusto mo siya. Apparently, hindi siya yung will ng Lord para sa'yo. Hindi siya hindi kanya gusto. Okay? Pwede kang gusto ka rin niya eh. Pero hindi siya yung will ng Lord sa'yo. Pakinggan niyo to. Okay? Hindi, siya yung gusto ng, hindi siya yung gusto ng Lord para sa'yo. Single people, listen to this. Pero gusto mo siya. So naisip mo, isabi ng Lord. Kaya delight ako. So para, God. <laughs> Nag-delight ka kay Lord. Ang hindi mo na-realize is, hindi si Lord yung nababago. Habang nasa presensya ka ng Lord, habang nagbabasa ka ng Bible, habang nag-church ka, habang nag-worship ka, yung heart mo ang nababago. Okay? Nare-realize mo, hindi siya. Hindi siya. Hindi siya. Lord, siya ba? Yan! Yeah. Now, pwede ka na mag-pray ng Lord. Eh dahil yun talaga yung, no, siya talaga yung plano ng Lord sa'yo. Ngayon, yung puso mo, dahil kandidelight mo sa Lord, naka-align na dun sa kalooban ng Diyos. Kaya pang nag-pray ka ngayon, no, pinag-pray mo na yung gusto ng Lord sa'yo. Si Lord naman. Amen, anak. Right? Are you getting this? Do you, you're, you're not trying to twist God's hand, but rather when you pray. No? So that's why merong ano eh, may, may prerequisite. If you remain in me, my words remain in you. No? When the word of God and your heart aligns, no, sabi niya, ask whatever you want. And now you're asking according to what God wants, Lord. Siya. Sabi niya, Lord. Amen, anak. Tuwantua yung mga singles. It is in the remaining in Jesus and His words that we come to know His will and therefore we are able to ask according to His will. Listen, it is in the remaining in Jesus and in His word that we come to know His will and therefore we are able to ask according to His will. And when you ask according to His will, the Lord says, it shall be granted to you. Come on, give the Lord a clap. Come on. Number two. And then I'm about to close so, so the, the team can come. Okay. We need to ask specifically. Prayers are to be specific. Bakit, pa, bakit kuya? Bakit pastor? Does God don't know what we want or what I want? No, He does. But apparently, He takes delight in us asking specifically. Remember, remember the, the blind man that I was talking about? in Mark chapter 10, no, si Bartimaeus. Okay? Check this out. No? So, the blind man, no, he realizes that Jesus was passing by. No, he, probably he, he hears crowds of people and they're talking about this man, Jesus, no, passing by and right where he was and he doesn't know, he doesn't. And so what, what he does is, Bulag she, he's sitting there and he starts to cry. Jesus! And he tries to hold the attention of Jesus. No, he just wants to make sure he was desperate. He was crying. He was petitioning. He says, Son of David, have mercy on me. Kawaan mo ako, Panginoon. 
Tawaan mo. He, he didn't stop. He just kept on crying. People were telling him, silence, quiet. And finally, Jesus hears him. Jesus, you no, know, Jesus walking with the crowd and all of a sudden he hears this, this voice of a man shouting, where is that? And he sees there's a blind man. Sabi niya, tawagin niyo nga siya, papuntahin niyo dito. So the blind man comes, comes up to Jesus and in verse 51, this is what Jesus says to the man. What do you want? Now I'm thinking, really Lord, you don't even know what the blind... He's blind! <laughs> but isn't it obvious that the man wants to see? What do you want? Siguro kung yung blind masan. Lord, blind ka rin? Hindi mo alam gusto ko? <laughs> Why did Jesus have to ask? Did Jesus didn't know? Of course he knew. Of course he knew. But then he had to ask. Not because he doesn't know, but because he wants the man to know what he really wants. Because many times in our life, we don't even know what we really want. And so the man says, Lord, I want to see. And Jesus said, you are healed. And all of a sudden, that man, his eyes were opened. Okay? Ask specifically. There's nothing wrong with asking God for specific things in your life. Huh? Ask God. If you need, you need, you know, maybe there's a lack of finances happening. Maybe you, re- you badly need a promotion. Maybe you need, you know, you, you need a, uh, you need wisdom on a particular project, an exam maybe. And you ask God, Lord, help me, Lord. Lord, I don't understand this. I don't formula na to. Lord, what am I going to do with my thesis? Ko? Ask. Ask specifically. Hey, ask. No, when was the last time you really asked God specifically for something? Number four. Number three. We need to ask continually. Say it with me, continually. In other words, you never stop asking. That's the idea. Do you know that that's the idea of Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 to 12? No. Ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. No. The words ask, seek, and knock are continuous tense. It is a continuous tense. In other words, no, God, well, no, if the literal translation of these words would be, ask and keep on asking. Don't stop. God delights in us persisting, prevailing, not stopping. Okay? God, you, you know, it's not even that God does not want to give it to us. I think He's training us to be persistent. Training us never to give up. No? Because we have, we have always that tendency in life to give up. Okay? Konti pa lang, no? parang sumusuko na tayo, no? God wants to strengthen you. Strengthen your faith. Strengthen your heart. Prevail. Not give up. Okay? The words ask, seek, and knock are continuous tense meaning that we are to keep on asking, keep on no? seeking, keep on eh, knocking. Just like yun nga, yung Lazada delivery. No? He's gonna pound until... No, until talaga sumagot, until gumising ka, until no, lumabas ka. Okay? It's to persevere, to persist in prayer. Okay? This doesn't mean that we beg and plead God until we wear Him out. No, no, yung parang uh, pagurin natin si, Diyos, si, si God. No, madadala din niya, mapapagod din yan. No. Okay? It means that we don't give up. To pray persistently, you have to stand on the Word of God, on His promises. You know, according to His will. You know God's Word. Pray it out. That's why we can pray for revival. Because it's in the Word of God. That's why you can pray for the salvation of your friends and family. Because it's in the Word of God. That's why we can pray for our nation. Because it's in the Word of God. The Bible says to pray for authorities. To pray for leaders. We can pray. We can pray. And sometimes we get frustrated. And I'll be honest, I've, I've been frustrated a number of times seeing the way our leaders lead us, the way our leaders lead this nation. No, but then, what do I do? No, I, do I give up? Do I stop? No, I keep on asking 
and asking, knowing that God is a God who is generous, who is loving, who is ready to bless us and meet us at the point of our need. No? To do something consistently. To, no? Until the answer manifests in your life. Eh? Wesley Jewell, another author when it comes to prayer, I think in his book, Prayer and Revival, he said the following, Sabi niya, pray, prevailing prayer is prayer that pushes right through all difficulties and obstacles. It drives back all the opposing forces of Satan and secures the will of God. Its purpose is to accomplish God's will on earth. Prevailing prayer is prayer that not only takes the initiative, but continues on the offensive for God until spiritual victory is won. Eh, yun pala ibig sabihin ng prevailing prayer, no? It pushes through the difficulties, though through the obstacles, drives back all the opposing forces of Satan. Eh? Until spiritual victory is won. I, I, I love this, this illustration ano, in, in, in John's chap, James chapter 5, verse 7 to 18. As James was continually talking and, and exhorting in prayer, he refers to Elijah. Okay? And go, he goes back all the way to the Old Testament and talks about Elijah. And, and this is what James says. Sabi niya, Elijah was a human being even as we are. In other words, what, what, what James is trying to say, hey, you might think that these people are amazing people. They're great men and women of God. They're men of great faith. But the reality is, they're, they're, just, they're just like you and me. They're just like Elijah is a man just like you and me. And yet, wait, 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 wait. But there's something about him. And though he's just like you and me, he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Whoa. Here's a man who was able to stop the rains from falling. He prayed, God, don't let it rain. For three and a half years, there was famine in the land. And then, you know, Again, sabi dito, again. I, I, I underlined the word again. I want to put on, say, say the word with me, again. again. Say it with me, again. 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 <laughs> again. <laughs> say it with me, again. Let me say again. Paulit ulit. Do it again. 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 And I realize that word again, basically, you no know, describes, summarizes Elijah's prayer life. Elijah's life. No, listen, again he prayed because that's who he is. He, he kept on praying over and over again and again. He didn't give up. Okay? So he prayed again and the heavens gave rain and the earth produced crops. Now, so what do I mean by this is the kind of prayer that Elijah prayed? Okay? Let, let's go back to the actual story. In the Old Testament, way back to, to the time of kings, no? when King Ahab was the king of Israel. Sabi dito, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41 to 46. Then Elijah said to Ahab, so, the background here is for, for three and a half years, it has not been raining. People have been trying to make it rain. People were doing the rain dance. No, that's, what, that's what they were doing. No? They, they're calling on the prophets of Baal to make it rain dance. Nothing was happening. It wasn't raining. Then sabi ni Elijah, go get something to eat and drink, for I hear the mighty rainstorm coming. Mm. He was saying to the king, go, go, go. I hear. I hear rain. I hear rain. So Ahab went, went to eat and drink, but Elijah, no, but Elijah, what he did was he climbed on top of the mountain, Mount Carmel, bowed low to the ground, and prayed with his face between his knees. And, and, and it was something like this. He was praying. He was on top of a mountain. And he started to pray. Prayed for what? Then he said to his servant, there's this boy that was assisting him. Sabi niya, but uh, can you, can you uh, go out and look towards the sea? So imagine, he's on the mountain and you can see everything from the mountain, right? Hey, mga ma mountaineers dito. You've, you've ever been on top of a mountain, you could see, the, you could see everything from the mountain. And apparently, the sea was just right there. So you could see, nakikita niya yung karagatan. Sabi, go, go to the edge. And sabi ni Elijah, no? look out toward the sea. And so the, the boy goes and he stays there for a while and he realizes, what am I trying to look for? So he goes back to Elijah and says, probably, 
he was even hesitant. Elijah was praying, sabi niya, uh, Sir, I don't see anything. And Elijah tells the boy, who is praying, go back again. And the boy goes, and he's like, Mahinip na siguro siya. And he goes back again. And, uh, sir, wala akong nakikita. Ano mang hinahanap ko doon? <laughs> Imagine ko yung bata, no? You were not even told what you're gonna look out for. Just see, look, go there, look. And this went on for what? Seven times! I don't know how long that was and Elijah just kept on praying. He kept on praying and telling the, the boy, go back, go back. Until finally, finally, look at this. No? Finally, at the seventh time, his servant told him, Sir, I see a, I see a little cloud, ulap, just about the size of a man's hand from afar. So, kasi laki daw ng, ng ano, fist ng tao, size of the man's hand, rising towards the sea. There's this cloud rising to the sea. <laughs> Then Elijah shouted, hurry to Ahab and tell him, climb into your chariot and go back home. If you don't hurry, the rain will stop you. And soon, as the, and, and soon the sky was black with clouds and a heavy wind brought a terrific great storm. And Ahab left quickly for Israel. Then the Lord gave special strength to Elijah. He tucked his clothes into his belt and ran ahead of Eli- Ahab's chariot all the way to the entrance of Jezreel. Wow, isn't that an amazing story? <laughs> And that talks about what? Referring to what James says. For all you know, this guy who made it rain, called out for rain when it was not raining, he's just like you. Sabi mo nga sa katabi mo, he's just like you. And what is the difference? He never gave up. Never gave up praying. Destiny is a praying church. When we didn't have much years ago, no, we can't afford this facility. No, we didn't have instruments. No, we really had nothing. But what we knew, what we had back then was God's word, His promises, and we prayed. And we prayed. Oh, we prayed. And that's why I'm encouraging everyone. You know, know, this, you know let us go back to that kind of, of church that we are supposed to be, that we're meant to be. It is a praying church. A praise that a pray, a church that cries out to God. A, a, you know, a church that dares to ask boldly and persist and not give up. Okay. Alright, Tori again. No? on the church as a praying church no, that prays steadfastly to pray steadfastly means to, to continue in prayer sabi niya no, the church that was founded in Acts was a praying church it was a church in which when they prayed not merely occasionally he need out, just occasionally but there they all continued steadfastly in prayers they all prayed not a select few but the whole membership not just some special people some intercessors a few people no it was the whole church that's how the church of God started. If you read the book of Acts, no, sabi dito, look at, no, look at Acts chapter 6, verse 4. And they all, no, okay, they gave themselves to prayer. Okay? They, they all gave themselves to prayer. A praying church and a praying ministry, such a church and such a ministry can achieve anything that needs to be achieved. It will go steadily on, beating down all opposition, surmounting every obstacle, conquering every foe just as much as today as it did in the days of the apostles and the early church. And finally, num- number four, we need to ask faithfully. So number one is we need, we need to ask according to His will. Maybe you would like to shorten that. We need to ask biblically according to His will, according to His word. We need to ask specifically, be specific in your prayers. We need to ask continually, no, not giving up. But we also need to ask faithfully. And then I, I, I made a play of words here. The word faithfully, nilagyan ko ng gas. Faithfully, or in other words, full of faith. 
Again, in James chapter 1, verse 5, if any one of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. Because God is generous. No, He is faithful. So it will be given you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Wait, 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 wait. This is how we need to ask. When you ask, you have to believe and not doubt. Why? Sino dito minsan na nalangin ka, nagpray ka, may hiniling ka sa, li- sa Lord, but at the same time, you're actually doubting whether God's gonna give it to you or not. You know what God tells us? Sabi dito, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed away by the way. Next verse. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Did you get that? Don't, don't, what James was saying is, you know what? Don't even expect na may makukuha ka, may papala ka. If in the first place, humiling ka sa Panginoon, and then magdududa ka. Eh? Ayaw na, no, bakit? As if you're telling the Lord, Lord, hindi ka naman totoo eh. It's actually accusing God of lying and not being true to His word and His promises. The Lord says, don't even expect that God's gonna, no, that's God gonna honor your prayer. No? So you're, 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 you're not gonna receive anything from the Lord. So how do we pray? Mark chapter 11, verse 24. So listen to what I'm saying. Whatever you pray for, ask from God and believe that you will receive it. Hey, whatever you pray for or ask from God, believe that you will receive it. In fact, in some translations, believe that you have received it. I mean, believe that you have received it because you have so much trust. You're confident. You're not even worrying about what you prayed for. It, it's like this, no? I remember there was a time that uh, you no, know, we don't we don't trust. Alam niyo ba that medyo na huli tayo pagdating dun sa online online buying and online selling. When the rest of the world has already been doing online buying and selling, like Amazon, tayo we are still parang unsure because we we are afraid kaya nga dito dito lang sa atin alam mo dito lang sa atin na uso yung cash on delivery kasi nga ayaw natin magtiwala na baka nabayaran mo na baka hindi dumating tama but because no eventually no you realize that the system can be trusted you're you're now confident like like okay when i purchase something from from Lazada or for some, like recently I, I made this purchase, medyo may kamahalan. No, actually it's, it's several thousand pesos. And the thing is, I already paid it. And that day, I would be afraid to take that risk of paying for it already because I'm not sure whether it's not gonna come or not. And I, I, I tend to worry. That was before. Now, no, no, no. I don't worry. I know <laughs> it's gonna come. I know I'm going to receive it. In fact, na, na, I, I remember this delivery just recently. I, I, I paid for it and it cost a lot. Really a lot. Really a lot. So I ordered it. And, I, and then I, I was sent the message that it was going to be delivered March 14. No? That's going to be on Tuesday. But then again, so I for, totally forgot about it. I didn't try to worry about it. No, I'm not, I'm not like, tarating kaya, naku, bayad ko na yun. Sana naman dumating, baka baka buksan nung ano, courier, kunin, no, sa customs, gano, kasi it's galing po sa ibang bansa eh. No, no, I, I didn't think of it that way. I don't know what's gonna come. You know what? All of a sudden, pagdating ko sa bahay just one day, nakita ko, sabi ko, oh, nandito na to, sana. Tapos isang pala yung nakatanggap. Tumating na. Okay? Even ahead of time. Okay? Bakit? And I don't have to worry, Bakit? Alam kong darating. Alam niyo bakit alam kong darating? Kasi bayad ko na eh. Bayad ko na eh. I don't even have to worry whether it's gonna come or not. I paid for it already. Oh, guess what? Jesus paid for it already. When Jesus died for us on the cross, He didn't only die for our sins. It's paid. All you have to do Pray. 
because it's already paid. Amen. Amen. Let us petition the Lord. Let us ask. Okay, I want us, I want us to right now. Can, can I invite everyone to just stand? Why have we been endeavoring on teaching about prayer? It's been two and a half months. And why are we pounding on this idea about prayer? Because prayer is, yeah. Prayer is powerful. Prayer is, prayer is our lifeblood as a church. And yes, you need to pray. You, you are commanded to pray. And when we pray, it shows God's character. That He is generous. He is love. He is a God who is willing to give. And so right now, can I endeavor, can I ask you to pray? Lord, I want you to close your eyes right now. Sabi na, Lord, ask. Lord, I want you to think of things right now in your life that you need to ask God for. You need strength so that you will not fall into sin, into temptation. Go ahead, ask the Lord. Maybe some of you just need to ask for wisdom. See, sometimes you feel like, like you're not, no, parang wala kang common sense, parang, just, ah, Lord, tell the Lord, Lord, I'm not, I don't know. Many times I feel lost. Lord, I need your wisdom. I need your guidance. Go ahead, ask the Lord. Okay? Maybe some of you need favor at work. Maybe some of you need that promotion. Maybe some of you need to pass. And you're trying so hard to study it, but sometimes you feel like it's not enough. And Lord, just, just ask. Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. Let's ask the Lord for revival. Let's ask the Lord for... Let's ask the Lord, Lord, that the Lord will grant us great leaders. That the Lord will, will rescue our nation. Let's ask the Lord for the salvation of friends and family. Let's ask the Lord that, that He would fill this, His church once again and that people will be saved. Let's ask the Lord. God, Lord, we just come to you, God, right now. Lord. Lord, God. Lord. Lord, let your prayers rise up before God. Lord, we, we come to you right now as a church, Lord. Lord, and we make this request, these petitions, God. Lord, we're not going to stop, Lord God. Lord, and right now, we, we, Lord, we want to ask according to your will, Lord God. Lord, align our hearts to you. Align our hearts to you, Lord. Let your kingdom come. Your will be done. Lord, not my will, not what I want, but your will be done in my life. Go ahead, pray. Pray for God's will over your life. Pray for God's destiny and purposes for your life. Fight for it in prayer. Bend your knees for it in prayer. Go ahead, just cry out. Just pray. Lord, even ask the Lord that He grant you a desire to pray. Maybe some of us, we're not even excited about the thought of praying. Maybe we think of it as something that is boring. No, but right now, tell the Lord, Lord, I want your presence. I want to know you. I want, I want to know the power of prayer. Lord God, go ahead. Maybe ask God for miracles to happen in your life. Okay? God responded to people. Showed them miracles, performed miracles to their lives, in their lives as a response of people asking. Go ahead, let's ask God, Lord, Lord. Lord, we pray for miracles right now in this church. We pray for healing. We pray for healing, God. Lord, supernatural healing, Lord, upon, upon your people, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, for breakthrough in our finances. Lord, sa mga nagkukulang, Lord God, those are suffering lack. Lord, I pray, Lord God, for restoration of families. Lord, maybe for some of you it seems impossible already. Maybe you've given up. But, but right now, Lord, just, just simple pray. Lord, restore our family. Restore my life. God, God, Lord, go ahead, specific, be specific. Maybe, yun nga, no, nakagalit mo, kapatid mo, no, and then you've not been talking for a while, go ahead, just ask the Lord, Lord. Hallelujah, God, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus, God, God, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages. I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. Yes. 
yes, that's why we pray. He is faithful. Our God is faithful. Come on. I need you now. Tell the Lord of our need of Him. How I need you now. Oh, oh, rock of ages. I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. Oh, God, my God, I need you. Lord, we just want to thank you, God. We thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to know about prayer, to know your character, to know your will. And Lord, we pray that, yes, Lord, Lord, we're going to ask. We're going to ask. Lord, we're going to come to you and pray. And Lord, so we, 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 we make this commitment right now, Lord God, to commit to pray in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a clap. Come on. Come on, give the Lord a clap. Praise God. Amen. So, and just, just to encourage, you know, you know uh, last week I already gave this challenge, but, but once again, I would like to issue this challenge to everyone. You know, there's no point talking about prayer and praying, you know, and yet we never commit ourselves to pray. You know? And you know, the reason that you don't experience how powerful prayer is, because maybe we never have really prayed, or maybe we prayed a little and then we stopped. No, you never saw the the end, no, at you know, the, the 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 results of your prayer because you already stop halfway. No, we just need to continue. We need to continue in order to break through. Okay, and so that's that's I would like to encourage you. No, okay, can I have the forms? Okay, as 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 you go as you go out this afternoon, no. So I want you to to get this this card, and this card is just a simple reminder of your commitment, not to pray. No, there's a verse right there that's for you to keep to remind yourself and then the schedules of our prayer meetings are there now this if you haven't done this no, no, no pray with us prayer is amazing okay? and so write your name your contact number and your email address no? tapos meron you know, po online prayer meetings every day okay? and I would like to encourage you to join our online prayer meetings only online no? at the comfort of your homes you can pray with us now no? Some of you might want to commit every day. Maybe some, hindi nyo pa kaya yun. Just choose one day. Probably even the most comfortable day for you. Just to get you started. Okay? Join us. So, so just take, kunyari Monday kayo or Saturday or, or Wednesday. Or maybe if you can do MWF, just check MWF. Okay? Or maybe just, just uh, TTH. So just check. If you want every day, check it all. But just make sure when you check, you're going to be there. Because we're going to be looking for you. That's why we're getting your name. <laughs> In other words, we're going to help you no, do your commitment. Okay? Pangalawa, ito I would really like to encourage you. On-site. No? Can, can, can you show the pictures of ano? Yeah, Saturday, praise God, there's a lot of people who started to pray with us. No? No, for, okay, for the longest time, no, actually, this is not the average. Sometimes just five, ten people would be there. But last Saturday, praise God, a lot of people were started to come. We had a beautiful time of praying. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. And I want you to be part of that. This is amazing. Okay? So that is Saturday, 6 in the morning, no? at the UP College of, uh, College of Science uh, lobby. No? It's a little bit much farther than here. But then, yeah, it's only Saturday. Just one hour. And just coming together. And it's, no? and it's fellowshipping. And just, wow. Okay, pagkatapos mayroon pa tayo ila-launch na evangelistic thing after this, no? After the prayer meeting. So, 
I'd like to enjoin you, you know, to, to join us for that. And plus, okay, we started a ministry of intercession. I believe nagsimula na ngayon. Ano? While I'm preaching here, right now, there are people at the back continually praying for me, praying for you, that we will receive the word. If you want to be part of that, just mention it. Gusto ko yata yung gusto ko matrain dun sa ministry of praying and intercession. Just write, just sign it there. Okay, I want to learn more about intercession. Okay, grab this and as you go outside, just sign and yeah, and we're gonna follow you up you no, know, on your commitments. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. You're watching Destiny Church. If you would like to check more resources or donate to this ministry, you can download the Destiny Church PH official app or log on to www.destinychurch.org.ph slash give.